hey guys welcome back to my channel marina here it has been a hot minute you guys like we've been doing a lot of vlogging just to capture all of what we got up to in the summer if it's your first time here you're welcome my name is marina i live in saskatoon saskatchewan and on this channel i share information to make settling into life in canada seamless for newcomers and foreign trained professional i'll be glad if you hit the subscribe button and join the family i wanted to come address something that got sent to me so over the last couple of weeks there was a particular video that another content creator made and was just sharing about how difficult things are in canada how hard it has been and just conversations basically sharing what their current reality is in canada and that video maybe like three or four people sent it to me and said is this thing true on instagram i got tagged on a couple of posts where people were sharing about how different let me put it that way how different things have become in canada and i thought okay this is a sign i am finally going to share my two cents on the current state of things in the country now this is not intended to um evoke any kind of negative emotions it is um painting somewhat the reality of what's happening so that the people who are coming who are newly landed can adjust their expectations or plan appropriately considering all these things that have changed do i agree that things have become different in canada things have become more difficult things have become more expensive do i agree with that the answer is a resounding yes Canada has changed significantly. Now, I'm not even going to go back to seven years ago when I first moved here because the difference is like night and day. I'm going to use post-COVID. So within the last two-ish years, the differences are significant, guys. I'm not even going to lie. And I'm going to be talking about this in the different areas that I see significant changes. The very first one, and I think this is the one that shocks me the most, is housing. Canada is facing a general housing shortage right now across many parts of the country i thought this problem was in the bigger provinces like the ontarios because we had some reports that over the summer some people were living in tents in downtown toronto like there were people who were living out of tents downtown toronto when i went to um, vancouver in the summer there was like an entire street that had tents like people were living on the streets in core vancouver so i thought this was a problem that okay maybe the bigger cities are facing because there's a lot of high influx of population into those places and they don't have a lot of housing to to match that um inflow but guys there are housing issues in saskatchewan as well I heard last week that there are now bidding wars on rental property. I've heard about bidding when it comes to buying property where, say for instance, you list a house at $300,000. Somebody can come and offer you three hundred and five. Another person can come and offer you three hundred and ten. Another person can come and offer... Like people were offering higher than the listing price just to give themselves the advantage to be able to buy those houses. I've heard about that for outright purchasing property. But for rental, like a landlord can list, say, like a basement for $1,000. You go and view the property. You like this property. You go away and say, okay, I'm going to go and bring the documents that you say you need for me to sign this lease. Before you come back, somebody has gone to offer the landlord $1,200. And the landlord will call you and tell you the house is no longer available. Somebody has paid higher. Like that is happening for rental now. And you guys mind-boggling i find that very mind-boggling because wow saskatoon i didn't really think that that was happening here until somebody told me and i've had a number of people reach out to me dms emails to say i'm looking for an accommodation to rent i send them the information of the realtors that i know to say okay talk to these people some of them have to wait for months before they're able to find accommodation to rent now it's not because they are not searching it's not because they don't have money the properties are just not available guys so if you're coming and you're looking to land like say in a place like saskatoon just know that you're going to need to plan for um alternative short-term accommodation before you might be able to secure like a longer term lease so if it's a hotel which i don't encourage because you're going to spend a lot of money it could be airbnb which is expensive as well but significantly cheaper than hotels so consider short-term alternatives this would be a good time for you to go and land in a place that you know people you know that i'm an advocate of that like when you're landing in canada make sure you're considering a place where you already have people to make that transition easier for you but say you're a provincial nominee and you're going to a province where you don't really know anybody just know that adequate planning is going to be needed you're going to need to plan 
and forecast that it might take you up to three months or more to get a longer lease so you want to figure out what you're going to do in that three month period or however long it takes you before you're able to secure um rental property that's one thing that everybody is facing in canada right now like the housing shortage is happening everywhere and you want to make sure you're planning appropriately the second one which is not news like it's almost like it's happening everywhere is the cost of food groceries house supplies everything you guys the differences are very glaring this morning i'm heading to the store to go and do like grocery shopping for my family i do like major grocery shopping once in uh, every four to six weeks every time that i go back say after four weeks for instance some things are significantly different in the price like i remember buying this for this price four weeks ago why is it so much more expensive one month later what is the reason behind this now we're all looking for salt in saskatoon salt there's no salt on the shelves <laughs> you guys it's a funny example but i know that when salt comes back on the shelf the price will most likely be different like it might be insignificant salt might be insignificant to you but i'm telling you guys that i've noticed that differences in almost everything meat chicken milk eggs everything basic things so not even luxury basic things that families need to survive the prices are crazy inflation is not smiling even households that have two sources of income and alternative sources of income all of that you you are, we're all feeling it replanning is needed for me what i have done is i have gone back to my pantry looked through everything to make sure that the things i'm buying from the store are the things that i absolutely need that my family absolutely needs this is not the time to be to be wasting food like i'm cutting off food wastage from my family if there's something that i know that they don't really like then that's not the thing that i buy in bulk for things like meat some nigerians or nigerians come together in saskatoon to maybe eight to ten people will buy like a full cow and share it it's going to be cheaper than going into the store and buying meat in bits so it's to consider all of those options that help you save money if you have to pay with people to buy things in bulk so that you can share that's going to help ah guys this one it's food is expensive it's really expensive the difference is a lot for the people who have been here a while what strategies are you using to save on food because even me i feel like i'm not doing enough i feel like there's more i can do to save on food i just don't know what i just don't know how else i can manage this but the prices are not smiling at all and adequate adjustments are needed especially for those of you who are new like my heart goes out to anybody who's landing in canada newly right now because the picture doesn't look good it just looks like false advertising where you come to this country with all of these high hopes and then you come you cannot even get a house to rent and then you go to the store you're looking at the money you brought and looking at the prices like how many months would you be able to live on the proof of funds that you bring in without a job as you land which now brings me to the third aspect that has changed which is the job market you guys this one is very heartbreaking it's particularly heartbreaking not just because i work in recruiting but i'm trying to put myself in the position of somebody who's new who just arrived in canada and then you come with all of your qualifications you have had your credentials assessed you have had everything evaluated and for some reason you are just not getting those calls back from recruiters first of all let me let you know something there's a 50 percent chance that that is not happening because of something you are doing there's a 50 percent chance that it is not because you are doing something wrong that's why recruiters are not call, calling you back the job market in canada has changed guys it has changed there are so many reports online that we see to suggest that companies are freezing recruitment because of fear of the looming recession and normally when inflation is very high the first area where a lot of organizations want to cut cost is recruiting they freeze recruiting they don't hire and then another thing at this time of the year a number of organizations are coming up to the end of their fiscal year and most times that's one thing that slows down when that's happening people don't rush to hire at the end of the year a lot of people are now looking back at their budgets to say okay what did we budget at the beginning of the fiscal year how are we doing now end of the fiscal year usually comes with like a slowdown of recruiting this is going to be like that until so say like early of the next year now this i could be wrong if i'm wrong please correct me but that's what i've noticed and from what i'm seeing online from the job boards from the number of job postings you will see typically um it's not that much anymore the job market has changed i read a report online last week that there were about forty thousand jobs added into the economy whether it was last month or last quarter i'm not very certain but in that same period 
Over 100,000 newcomers were welcomed into the country. So for a country that is welcoming 100,000 people, we have added 40,000 jobs. So what, for every two and a half or three people, take one job? Like, it's not, it doesn't seem like there's enough that is happening within the country to make up for the number of people that are coming in. Like, the inflow is a lot more than what the country can sustain right now. So it is a bit of a mess everywhere, guys. If you're coming in now, the strategy has to be different. Your job search strategy has to be different. This is where um, asking questions code calling using your professional network using the people who you already know just to ask questions you might need to consider jobs that probably are not at the same level as your education or your experience for a start as things pick up then you'll be able to position yourself better for jobs that are commensurate with your education and experience if you're changing careers this is time to consider what jobs are in demand because even with this low job shortage there are people who are still changing jobs if you're in a profession where your um skills and your experience is in high demand there's no shortage there so you want to if you're going to look to switch careers you might want to consider what is more lucrative what is in demand what is needed and start to build skills and experiences in those areas if you check my channel i've done a number of videos relating to careers relating to the job market just things to help you position yourself just things to help you position yourself and make the right choices i recently found two stores in saskatoon this is saskatoon specific i found two stores in saskatoon that i think might be helpful for the people who are new um or relatively new in saskatoon and you're looking to set up like your new home you have now found a rental property you're looking to furnish it you're looking to buy like your house supplies i found two stores that i think might be helpful for you the first one um is a furniture store that sh that sells like furniture like sofas like beds like all the things you need, all things furniture, uh, mattresses, pillow, headboard, all those things. Now, when I say this store is affordable, I don't mean it is cheap just standing by itself. It is affordable compared to other stores that carry the same line of products. And the store that I'm talking about is called International Furniture Warehouse. It is situated on Faithful Avenue um, in Saskatoon. Now, this is not a sponsored video. I'm just saying this is what I found. I found it was very helpful for me and it might be helpful for somebody as well. International Furniture Warehouse carries like a wide range. Now, why I know that this store is reasonably priced compared to their counterparts is that there are some products, there are some brand names that I saw in International Furniture Warehouse. And when I went to other stores, same brand name, some of these prices were marked up by at least a thousand dollars. So the differences in the price between them and their counterparts significantly different international furniture warehouse is more affordable compared to those places i found them when i was moving houses and i'm so glad that i took the chance i saved a lot of money going with them as against the other stores i've gone with before when we bought the first house we furnished it with one other big name and guys my experience has not been good while you're dealing with furniture stores in Saskatoon, one thing you want to pay attention to is to read the fine print in the contracts. Like some of the deals that they offer you, especially as a newcomer, are backhanded deals. If you do not read, you end up spending more money, especially for those ones that sell protection plans and tell you you can buy protection plan on the furniture. They'll come and change it if anything happens. There are always stories when it's time for them to redeem those promises. And if you don't use the protection plan after five years, you can come back and get the money that you paid back so it's like paying for insurance against damage wear and tear and things like that if you don't use it after five years they'll tell you you can come and take the money back you guys read the fine print i did protection plan five years ago i did not use it it was time for me to redeem it i went into the store and they told me that i have to spend one thousand dollars to redeem the two hundred dollars protection back my own money i had to spend a thousand dollars to get two hundred dollars technically not even get it back because it was my money you were refunding to me so before you refund me i have to spend a thousand dollars to get it so read the fine print a lot of these deals are backhanded i had a much better experience with international furniture warehouse than i did with all the other furniture stores that i've dealt with in saskatoon just something for somebody to pay attention to the second store that i found very helpful for household um, items from from rugs to clothing to kitchen stuff to decorative pieces is bianca lamont liquidation store you guys that store is a hidden gem in saskatoon i first heard about bianca from funke i'll put her name on the screen funke is a 
content creator in Regina. I first heard about Bianca from her. She told me there was a Saskatoon store. And when I went there, guys, I did not believe some of the prices that I was seeing. I don't know if the prices are cheap because it's a liquidation store. But either way, it works for me. There are some pieces that I use to decorate my new house that I got from Bianca Lamo. If I tell you how much some of the paintings in my house cost, you will not believe. All of them are from there. So if you're looking to furnish a new house, that is an option that you can consider. So International Furniture Warehouse, Bianca Lamo Liquidation Store two stores that i highly recommend for people who are looking to furnish new houses in saskatoon and if you ever go to international furniture warehouse please say hi to mitch from marina like again not sponsored i just think if something is good we are going to share about it for those of you who have been here um for a while have you noticed the differences in life in canada have you noticed the differences in prices please share that in the comment section it would help somebody learn it will help somebody make the necessary adjustments as they begin to plan for life in canada okay i hope you found this video helpful if you did please share if you are yet to subscribe to my channel please hit the subscribe button so that we can continue to grow our family thank you very much for watching this video guys and until i come your way in the next one it is your girl marina as always saying thank you and have an awesome day bye guys Oh, 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 oh,